Hi everyone, my name is Nikki Haverstock. I'm the author of 14 Cozy Mysteries on Amazon and this is the author two portion of my YouTube channel. So I should be working, preparing for my podcast or writing, but I decided instead to do a tag because it's new and it looks super fun. So uh, you can see it right here. Uh, Leora Parrot, um, I almost said Parrish. Leora Sophie did this. It is the author bucket list tag and it has about 21 questions. So I thought, oh, I'll just blow off all my work on a Monday morning and do this instead for fun. So question one, which famous author would you love to have read and comment on your work? I think right off the bat, I can say Janet Ivanovich. She is really um, kind of the head of this genre. Another there might be Jana uh, DeLeon, who is an independent author who I actually know but um, I don't believe she's read any of my work. Some other people might be A. Lee Martinez, who was very instrumental to me to kind of see like what can fantasy and science fiction be beyond maybe my, like the kind of stuff I read when I was a kid. Like there's a lot more you can play with it and I definitely absorbed some of that. Um, Jim Butcher, I could go on forever. Jennifer Cruzy, um, yeah, so I'll stop there. What is the ultimate compliment someone can give you on your writing? That it was funny. That's it. Like, it's so simple, but it's just, whatever people say, oh, I read your book and it was so funny. It's like my heart just grows 10 times its size. That is definitely the number one compliment that I can get. And of course, secondary ones are like, you know, it, it was fun, which is so close to the word funny. But fun, but I really want to entertain people. I want, I want them to be able to go to my work and say, that it lifted them up and took the weight off of their shoulders and for a while they felt safe and like they were with a really good friend and their friend that makes them laugh. Three, um, what would you like from your fans? Gosh, I, I don't necessarily know that I want anything. I guess maybe to re that they reread it. Like I want to be the equivalent of like a 30 Rock or Parks and Rec or an office where people come back and spend time with my work. Um, I don't necessarily need tattoos or fan work or fan fiction or anything like that. I guess maybe word of mouth and like I said, if they just say this is a really funny book, um, that that's good enough for me. What are any contest awards, bestseller lists you want to be a part of and what are they? I would say for sure I would want to have a USA Today make a list. Um, I would happily take it as part of an anthology, but I would also, of course, after that, I would be thrilled to do it on my own. Um, I think that's the biggest one. I would be interested in like a Nebula or, or a Hugo or um, a lot, I, I'm not sure what the writing, the mystery one is. Some of the groups I've looked at are very exclusive and you can only get it if you're traditionally published. And I, right now, I don't have any interest in that. So I think, um, I think USA Today is probably the, the best one and that's the one that I look at the, the most. Um, do you want to publish your work? Which works in progress? Most? So I am published. Um, I would say though, I want to do more than just this. I want to be in McSweeney's, which is a, or the New Yorker. They're both very high on my list. Those are online, um, comedy sites. And so it's, it's a big, if you're a comedy writer, that's kind of one of those things that it, probably a lot of the com comedians that you watch on TV have been in McSweeney's or New Yorker or have tried to. It's kind of a, a a big notch in your belt bid thing so anyway so that that's kind of big otherwise I am published and I'm super excited I am super excited to get two more books out of my space cozy series because then I can really start pushing it it's really hard to sell a single book and I only have one out right now do you want to be traditionally published what is your dream publisher I do not want to be traditionally published I love being self-published which is technically the next question um, I am published independently um, my goal, that's also part of the question, is would be as simple is to provide for my family. I want to be able to um, be able to pay all our bills with this money and then that way um, we can eat. <laughs> yes, it's pretty obvious. But I am not against traditional publishing and if someone came to me with the right deal, I would absolutely do it. And so for that, I would look at, of course, big publishers like Penguin or Tor. Super happy. But I think a little bit more niche one that might be a better fit for me would be something like Hallmark. Um, I think I write, definitely write to their demographic. I tend to write a little shorter than they've looked at. Um, a friend and I looked at it together and it just didn't quite work for where each of us were. But that's something that is definitely, 
I'm not taking off of the radar because I love their work, I love their movies, a lot of their books get converted to movies and that would be something that would be really neat to me. Um, do you have question eight branch out which genres have you never written in that you'd like to try? I've written in a lot of genres that I, I'm really happy with so I have cozy mysteries and I have one I have them in the paranormal sort of urban fantasy they're called paracozies so it's very much um, like the Dresden Files if they were tidied up a little bit and weren't quite so edgy and gritty um, and I have a sci-fi one, which I'm really happy with. I think the only thing I haven't written that I think I could would be a rom-com, like a straight-up romantic comedy. I love them, and I have not taken them off my list. Um, it would be, um, I actually have one that I've been playing with in my head called When Harry Met Scaly, and it would be a mermaid or a siren and a werewolf that go on a sort of When Harry Met Sally type cross-country journey to rescue her best friend from her ex-boyfriend. Um, and um, I think that would be really fun. And I don't think there's nearly enough paranormal rom-coms. There are books, but not movies. And so um, I have a comedy portfolio that I'm putting together and I would, I would write that. So that is, that is the one thing that I'm not currently doing. Uh, do you want to write full time? Yes. I currently put in the time technically to be full full time, especially if you count my brainstorming hours. Um, if you count just the hours that I'm at the computer conducting business or actively typing, that I'm probably three quarters full time, but I'm not paid full time. I guess that's something that on YouTube is considered an important distinction is some people feel very strongly that you're only a full time author if it if it's paying a full time wage. Um, so in all in all truthfulness I am a full-time author in terms of time I am not a full-time author in terms of pay so take that as you will but yes I would love to do it and I would love to be um, I tend to work like almost six days a week almost seven but I work shorter hours and then some weeks I do 10 hour days and some weeks I do one hour days so um, 10. Who would you like to co-author with? Who? I mean, all the people that I said I would love to read, um, I would love to work with. Um, but in terms of people that I might actually have a friend, Zara Keen, who is an amazing author, and we've kind of talked about it. It's not worked out for either one of us yet, just because we both have a lot of projects. And, you know, it's so hard. You've always got to keep churning out stuff on your backlist. Um, so that's someone I would consider, and there's, I mean, there's other people I would consider if we both had a project where we felt like we could do it together better than we could do it separately. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm also a little, because my work schedule tends to be very uppy downy, where either I'm hugely productive or I, I just can't get it together, I think I would be a difficult person to work with. Um, and, and so I haven't really pushed it because I haven't wanted to hurt any friendships. Adaptations. Would you like your work adapted for audio, screen, movie, or TV, which works? Definitely TV. Um, either a TV show, like flat out show show, or something which, like I saw Hallmark is doing, which is they're taking the Aurora Tea Garden, who is um, Charlene Harris, who is someone else I would love to co-write with or see my work or anything. Um, and they're making, it's not quite a TV show, they're not quite a movie series. And so they're doing their movies, but they're not... They're like made for TV movies, and I think that'd be a great adaptation of my work. I think it could be also be a great TV show. I love TV, um, and uh, yeah, so that would be definitely something in terms of audio. Like I already have audio books, so but I assume it means maybe like audio plays. I don't know. Um, what languages would you, would you like to see your work translated into? I don't know. I've never really thought about that. That's None of my books are making enough money to where I could justify doing translations. It's like, it's hard enough to sell books in English and I speak English. So the idea of trying to translate work and then working out marketing for another, that just seems overwhelming. But I would do it if someone came to me. If someone came to me and said I want to buy the rights to do translations, I might consider it. I probably would consider it. Fame and fortune, do you want to be famous? Describe a scenario that illustrates how famous you want to be. Yeah. I mean, I want to be famous in the kind of way where I can go into a store without being mobbed. But if I said, oh, I write these books, people would be like, oh, okay. Um, and I mostly would want it so I could have opportunities. I consider myself to be a comedy person. And so I would love the opportunity to go and do interviews. And I have terrible stage fright 
recently it's a new thing so maybe I wouldn't love that but I'd like to be able to give back to people to um, doing the YouTube channel to d maybe go to events and speak and give back to people and help so I guess uh, but it's funny because there there are people that I know that don't do that and no one would ever know who they are and they're making seven figures a year. So it's kind of, in, in indie, it's very different. Like you get the money, but you don't seem to get the, the fame the way maybe people who are in bookstores and are traditionally published but aren't making the money. So it's kind of interesting balance. Um, where, on what platform would you like to be interviewed about your work, book tours, panel talk shows? I would like to be, I think the very first thing that came to mind was Vulture. So Vulture does a lot of comedy news. They talk about the best podcasts, they talk about the, you know, the seven funniest books. And so that is where I could see myself landing. That's where I could see a legitimate interview if I was doing, if I was accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish. I could see doing, um, that would be a place I would love to be interviewed where they say, oh, so how did you transform your love into comedy into a working job that you can do from home? And, you know, that kind of thing. So that is something I would love to do. Of course, something like People, you know, where they do like a best um, or any of those sort of, um, the kind of magazines that you find, they're just everywhere and they have all the latest news and they do stuff like, oh, a book you should be reading at the pool this summer. I would love for my book to be, a pool or a beach read. Um, we live in the mountains and so when I pitched my book to the library I called it a river read and they just love that term but that is what I, this is a book that you can pick up, you can instantly be transported to joy um, and you don't have to worry about your kids picking up or your grandma picking up or anything like that. So that that is definitely the kind of thing I would want to do. Where on what platform would you, oh sorry, uh, what is a writing or book related event that you'd like to participate in as an author? Hmm. Well, I would say right now our local literary festival. So it, I got in as a local author and then they had to cancel it and they're going to probably redo it, but they have no idea when they're going to be reopening events. And that was my first big event to show up and be like, I'm an author. And um, I would also like to attend some conferences. I haven't been able to go to any. I was going to go to my first book conference. I went to Romance Times one day because we were in town. But I was just, uh, you know, went to a couple, hung out with a bunch of friends and stuff. That was lovely. But um, I was going to go to my first conference this summer, and it was canceled. Now it's a virtual, virtual one. Um, so what kind of effect would you like your writing to have on your readers in the world? And I've said, I, I kind of said it earlier. It's, my point of view is really clear. I want to make people laugh. I want to, I want to, I want to have people laugh, but not in a hurtful way. So I don't want to be undercutting at the expense of other people where you go, this person's going to laugh at it and this person's going to be devastated because I made fun of them. Unless it's something like I'm making fun of intolerance or uh, jerks or sexism or something like, well, if you're sexist and you're hurt, then I guess that's okay. But um, I want people just to feel like it was a good time, like a warm bubble bath in a, in, a, in a big cup of cocoa in front of a raging fire with a blankie. I want my books to feel that way. And I want people to, it's okay if people go, well, it's not literature. I'm fine with that. There's plenty of amazing people who are writing literary fiction. It's just not something I'm drawn to. It's not something I read and it's not something I think I have the skill set for and, or any of that. Um... Do you want your work taught in classrooms? Maybe. I mean, I, I, I mean, it, it depends. I've taken a lot of comedy writing classes. And so, yeah, in that context, I would, I would be so honored if someone did um, and pulled out, you know, an incident or a chapter or, you know, or even something like um, a creative writing class that focused on genre fiction. I would love that. Uh, do I think this is... A huge goal of mine? Probably not. Do I think it's very realistic? Probably not. Author platform. What are your, some, your goals with your author platform? Followers, subscribers, etc. Well, more. More. I mean, I, I, would, I would like more followers um, with the assumption that they're... I didn't trick them into it. I wouldn't buy followers. I've done some events that are meant to build up your following. And... Sometimes they work because these are genuine, engaged fans of the genre that enjoy your work. And that I'm totally fine with. But sometimes you, you get people who are just trying to get an Amazon card. And we all learn as authors, you try marketing things and you go, well, that 
these people are not fans of my work and they've been essentially strong-armed into following me and now they're unhappy with my content and we are both happier when they go the other way. But I mean, things like I would like to have a my mailing list get up to maybe 20,000 um, of people who either like my genre or specifically like my book. Um, and uh, beyond that, I'm not too worried about things. I would like my YouTube channel to grow. Let's see, we're down to, we're down to the nitty gritty. Um, what are 10 things you hope to accomplish in your writing career? I'd like to get to 50 books. I'd like to make 50,000 a year profit, which is my, which is kind of the number, the myth, mythical mom, number for me that would pay, that would be a full-time job um, because of just where we live in our bills. So that's two things. Um, I'd, I guess I'd like to hit USA Times, um, USA Today, or New York Times list. Can I just stop at four? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'd like to finish off a series. I have not, I know I'm not done really, uh, have not done that. I'd like to get another book bub. I've, I've gotten several and then I haven't gotten any in years and I'm starting to be like a little desperate for those. Um, I mean, beyond that, I would like to make enough money to buy a vacation home um, to support, have enough money so that my husband can start his dream job. That's right now he is putting all of his dreams on hold so that he can support me. So I want to do the same for him. Um, I would love to have something adapted. I would love to be on some kind of talk show. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. What is the most inconceivable dream that you would love to see happen with your writing? I mean, to hit like a J.K. Rowling level where you have movies and you have the freedom to create with people. Like you could approach someone and be like, I think you're a great actor. Do you want to, you know, do you want to work on that? To work with people like Judd Apatow or Steve Martin or, you know, these people that I think have really distinct voices where we could like just sit in a room and pitch ideas at each other and come up with something really fun that delights us. I'd love to be able to, um, you know, like the John Green level where he can just do a blog and people are like, oh, it's so interesting. Um, all that. I think, I think for me it's mostly about opportunities and some of that is money, but a lot of it's just opportunities that are not available to you even if you had a ton of money unless you just want to pay someone to be your friend. So what are some milestones that you've already hit in your career? Well, I, make a, I do make a profit virtually every month which um, I used to think was not good enough, but I've since found that a lot of people never get to that point. So I should be incredibly thankful. I've written more than, I've written, um, I have 14 books. If I keep, I, I can't really remember. I have three short stories and I have one that is about to come out. That is a lot of, that's a lot of books. A lot of people don't make it this far. A lot of people burn out. I'm coming up in my five year of being published. So I'm actually past six years of writing and a lot of people don't make it that hard that far because there's that initial like I have these ideas a lot of people will like just blaze through things in a year and then they run out of energy and they burn out and they're never able to recover and I feel very sorry for those people but I've managed to figure out how to get past that it's still really hard gotten past it we had a son in the middle of that and that's something that derails a lot of people for the rest of their life the most amazing derailment in the world, don't, you know, but we got past that. We've gotten through uh, two miscarriages. We've gotten through a, a very emotionally difficult move. It wasn't by choice. It was just something that had to happen because of circumstances. And that was really, you know, derailed us, um, you know, mental health issues, all that kind of stuff. And so I feel like I've gotten past a lot of things that are incredibly difficult and I'm constantly getting more emotionally stronger and believing in my vision. I become a much better writer, which is something that I still don't necessarily believe, um, that I could be a good writer. Um, like even now I want to qualify that and say not a great writer, not a better than you writer, just a good writer, um, an okay writer. Um, so I think I've gotten past a lot of things. So that was my author bucket list tag. Um, I encourage you, I will link the video I got it from down below. I encourage you that if you enjoy the tag to go back to her video and do your own. Thanks.